Alrighty, how's everyone doing? Uh, today I'm going to be doing my Sky Striker deck profile for you guys. I play this on uh, Ranked Ladder and I play it in about mid diamond to high diamond. I fluctuate between diamond 1 and diamond 3 with this deck. Um, it's very competitive, it's very good, so I think this is probably the best way to play Sky Strikers right now. Especially with the second Kagari coming off the ban list. Now, um, I know Adventure Sky Striker is another very popular list. Um, I do have another list I'll be putting on the channel at some point. So if you want to be playing Adventure Sky Strikers, I will have that for you very soon. But uh, we'll get straight into it. If you want the list, it is in the description. Or you can just take it off the screen if you know what the cards are visually. Um, but other than that, we're going to get into it. I'm going to explain each every card for everyone. Just in case someone might not know uh, what something does. So, uh, 3 Maxi. This is a hand trap that we want to discard during our opponent's turn. And we draw every time they special summon. Then we play 3 Ash Blossom. Uh, another hand trap. Um, so discard it to negate an effect that adds from the deck to the hand or sends a monster from the deck to the graveyard. There's, a, there's an array of effects here. I'm not going to go too much into, um, you know, hand traps because they are um, somewhat generic. So if you don't know what they do, I suggest just reading up on hand traps. Um, but definitely play these six. They're very, very strong. Then we're going to play three rays. So this is your main monster. So... Um, Sky Strikers are all about Link 1s, so you just use this one monster to make your Links, which we'll get to in the extra deck. Um, but essentially, you can Quick Effect Tribute uh, Ray, and then you can Special Summon one of your Link monsters. So, it's just a way that you can dodge things uh, such as Imperm, Vela, um, you can dodge things like Maxi, so you can prevent them from drawing one card and things like that. Uh, but the strongest Ray effect is her secondary effect, so while she's in the graveyard, if a Link monster leaves the field by your opponent's card effect or is destroyed by battle, so essentially anything that removes your Link monster, Ray will come back from the graveyard. So really good, you know, obviously it'll come back on your opponent's turn and then you can use her quick effect to summon another Link monster on your opponent's turn. Um, very, very cool. Then we have the one Sky Striker Rose. Now, you can play two of this if you like. Some people even play three. I just don't like bricking on too many monsters because you only really need one. You only need one Link Monster on the field. So I don't like playing any more than this. Just just having one in the engine is fine for me. But um, if you feel more comfortable playing two so that you can get access to your Links more, that's definitely something you can do. So essentially, Rose's effect is if a face-up uh, Sky Striker Monster is summoned, she can special summon herself from the hand. So that's a way you can make Link 2s or even XYZs. I'm not playing them, but you can play them uh, with the Ray. Uh, and also, just like Ray, her graveyard effect is slightly better than her on-field effect or her hand effect. So while she's in the graveyard, if an extra monster zone monster leaves the field by your, your card effect um, or battle, uh, you can special summon her from the graveyard, non-target, negate a face-up monster your opponent controls. So this card helps you out things like Avramax and things that can't be targeted. So very, very strong. Just another way to out things that, you know, Sky Strikers sort of struggle with, which is uh, non-targeting. Uh, but that's all the monsters we play. There's only four monsters in the deck or two monsters in the deck, but we're playing four copies. So uh, definitely, uh, you want to max out on Ray, and then you can sort of choose whatever ratio of rows you want to play. Uh, then I play three Nibiru. So this is another hand trap. Like I said, if you aren't sure what hand traps do, I definitely suggest reading up on them. Maybe I'll do a video in the future sort of explaining the best meta hand traps if people want to ask for that. But um, so gen generally, uh, what Nibiru does is if your opponent summons five times in one turn, you tribute all of their monsters. And then you summon this from your hands and give them a token. Um, we essentially play this because it gives us access to Zeke plays, which is uh, one of the cards in our extra deck, which we will get to. Um, but that's all the monsters in the deck. We don't play that many. Uh, I believe it's 13, 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yep. So that's all we play at the moment. And most of them are hand traps. So you play the one Rota. This is a very generic spell. It just adds any warrior from your deck to your hand that's level 4 or lower. So this just is another copy of our Rays or Rose if you already have Ray. Uh, terraforming just searches any field spell, so we do have a field spell, so this just helps us get to that. Uh, and then we play two Avarice, so you could cut these two for different cards, which I will update the profile when the new ban list comes out. But for now, this is just here because we get to recycle Kagari and all of our other Link monsters as well. Then we play three Desires. Uh, Desires is banish 10 cards from the top of your deck and draw two cards. With Sky Strikers, you want as much card advantage as possible, so... This card really helps you uh, just draw into engine pieces or things to interact with your opponent. We have two engaged. So this card is pretty much the bread and butter of Sky Strikers. So if you have no monsters in your main monster zone, you can add any Sky Striker card from your deck to your hand. And then if you have three spells in your graveyard, you can draw one card. So uh, Sky Striker spells, uh, if you have three spells in your grave, they get an additional effect. So that's why we play so many spells to put them in the grave and then get these additional pluses, which is sort of how Sky Striker functions to to out-advantage your opponent, essentially. 
Um, but this is two extra copies of either Ray or Rose. So again, it's another way just to get into our Link 1 engine. Um, it also can search things like Afterburners, which we're going to get into in a minute, and Widow Anchor, which is like your removal cards and things like that. So speaking of the Afterburners, we have one copy of it. I only play one because we have other removal in the deck, so you don't really need more than one. Um, and I also don't like bricking on multiple cards because I want to have versatility, essentially how I'm going to break my opponent's board. But uh, it's up to you if you want to play more than this. This card's very good. Uh, essentially, target a face up monster on the field and destroy it. And then if you have three spells in your grave, you can also destroy and spell and trap. So you're essentially destroying two cards. And then you can add this back and do it again with one of our link monsters, which we'll get to. Uh, this is three lightning storms. So essentially, this is like Dark Hole and Regeki and all those removal cards. It's, it's essentially like those, but it's slightly stronger. So uh, if you have no face-up cards, destroy all attack position monsters your opponent controls, or you can destroy all spells and traps. So one, Skystriker Airspace Area Zero. Uh, this is our field spell. Um, as I was talking about earlier, we do have the one terraforming to search this card. Um, you can play two if you're worried you're going to draw the terraforming while you already have Area Zero, but that's sort of something you don't have to worry about since Area Zero can send the terraforming. Um, so essentially what Area Zero does is target a card you control, Excavate the top three cards of your deck, which is essentially revealing them. Uh, and then you can add any Sky Striker card from your, from your deck to your hand um, from those cards. Uh, and then send the targeted card to the, to the graveyard. Um, and what's really interesting about this card is the way that it resolves is if you're chaining the card that you're targeting to remove from your field, you essentially still get the card from the top of your deck, which is sort of hard to explain. But um, I can show you in another deck profile. Or maybe I'll do some gameplay videos to sort of explain that. But essentially, if you chain the card that you're targeting, you get to keep both cards, which is really, really good. Um, the secondary effect of Area Zero is if it goes to the graveyard by a card effect, you can special summon one of our uh, ace monsters from the deck. So we get to summon Ray, or we get to summon Rose. Uh, then we play the one multi-roll. Um, this card is arguably one of the best cards in the deck, but unfortunately, it's really good going first and not the best going second. So we just play the one copy to sort of search it if we're going to have a grind game. Um, but what this card does is you can target another card you control and send it to the graveyard and then your opponent can't activate anything in response to your spells for the rest of the turn. So it essentially turns all of your spells into super polymerization, which if you're familiar with that, it means your opponent cannot respond to the activation, which is absurd, <laughs> basically. This card is, is very good. Um, it also has a secondary effect. Um, you get to set from your graveyard Sky Striker spell cards up to the amount you activated that turn. So you essentially get all your Sky Striker spells back for free during the end phase. So it's very good for, for the grind game, um, but it's very niche and sort of only for going first. So I suggest just playing one. Then we play two Call by the Graves. Uh, this is a meta card that counters all these hand traps I was talking about, like Maxi, Ash Blossom, things like that. Um, so we just play that to sort of combat the meta hand traps other people are playing. Um, it targets a monster in your opponent's graveyard, banishes it, and then negates the effects of that card until the uh, end of the next turn. So um, you can also use it on your opponent's monsters. If you're in a mirror match, you can banish Ray and things like that. Um, it has a lot of uses, really. So um, I'll probably explain that in the hand trap video as well. Uh, then we play the one Hornet Drones. Uh, this is a token generator. So we special summon one Sky Striker token, um, which essentially replaces our monsters and allows us to access our link monsters. Um, so it's at one. Um, so we just play the one. Uh, and if you have three spells in your grave, it, it gets 1500 attack, which isn't really relevant, but, you know, sometimes, you know, attack points matter, right? So, it's an okay additional effect. Next up is three Widowmaker. This is arguably one of the best Sky Striker spells in the deck. Um, this is pretty much the bread and butter of the deck and what we're going to be, you know, searching and recycling as much as possible. Um, what this card does is it's a quick effect. We get to target a monster on the field and negate its effects. And then if we have the three spells in our graveyard, we can take control of the monster. So it's really good uh, when your opponent is attacking you, you can take their monster. Or during your turn, you can take their monster and link summon with it. Um, you can prevent them on their turn from XYZ and fusion summoning. This, this card just has a lot of applicable uh, plays and things like that. It's, there's so much to explain about this card. Um, you really just have to play with it to understand the versatility of it. Um, so that's why we play three copies of it and absolutely just play as many as we can. Um, as a, and this is essentially what you're going to be searching with, you, with your Kagaris out of the graveyard as well. Um, so when we get two of it, it means we have two additional copies of Widow Anchor, which is very, very strong. Uh, then we play the one Shark Cannon. Um, this is a DD Crow, so you target a, a monster in your opponent's graveyard and banish it. And then if you have three spells in your grave, you get to summon it. So um, it's very good, but um, it's not very good going second. So uh, as I said earlier, much like multi-roll, 
Um, we're playing a going second build, so we're playing multiples of this. They kind of become dead cards, essentially, where you can't really uh, get a lot of value out of activating them. Um, but some people play two and going second or three. It just depends on the build and also the meta game. If there's a lot of like graveyard effects and things like that, you might want to play three of these cards. Now, coming to the end of the spell cards, we play three copies of Forbidden Droplets. This is one of the best spell cards in the game. Essentially, it's a very, very meta relevant spell card. And we want to play three of it in Sky Striker because it has a lot of really good synergy. Essentially, you send any number of copies of uh, cards from your hand or field to the graveyard. Um, and then you negate effect monsters your opponent controls equal to the amount of cards you send. So if you play this and send two cards, you get to negate two monsters. Um, it's really good. It also halves their attack points and it doesn't target. So it's really, really good about, um, with breaking boards and things like that. Um, and your opponent cannot actually respond with cards that are the same type that you send. So if you send a trap card with this, um, your opponent can't respond with traps, essentially. Very, very good card. I suggest uh, playing three of this. And then the last card we play is just two impermanents. So I would play three, but I don't want to play 41. I'm just one of those players that only like 40 cards, unless I'm playing a dedicated 60 card list. Um, so we just play two, but you know, if you want to play the third copy, you can go ahead and you can play the third one right here. Okay, moving on to the extra deck. So moving on to the extra deck, uh, we have our one copy of Kagari. This is our best Sky Striker Link Monster, which is coming back to two in about eight days, not that I'm counting. <laughs> And uh, essentially what this card does is you target a Sky Striker spell in your graveyard and you get to reuse it, you get to add it back to your hand, um, which is really, really good because you, you're also getting those secondary effects. So you can go engage, search, and then draw, add it back with Kagari, and then search and draw. So you're essentially getting really, really good pluses, um, which is essentially why this card was limited. But we're getting two, which is really good, and I, that's why I think Sky Striker is going to be one of the best decks coming into the next format. Um, she also has a secondary effect where she gains 100 attack points for each spell card in your graveyard. So she can become quite big. She starts at 15, she can get well over 2,000. Um, so very, very good um, monster. It becomes uh, essentially a beat stick for the deck as well. Uh, then we play three copies of Shizuku. Um, much like Kagari, she uh, has an effect with spells in the graveyard, but she makes your opponent's monsters lose attack uh, and defense equal to the spells in your graveyard times 100. So very similar to Gagari, but she's essentially nerfing your opponent's board rather than buffing herself. Um, and then during the end phase that she's summoned, you can search a spell from your deck, Sky Striker spell, I should say, from your deck, uh, that's different to the ones in your graveyard. So that's why you need to manipulate your graveyard with multi-roll and Kagari. Um, and then you get to search essentially during your end phase, your engages or your uh, Widow Anchors and things like that. Um, so very, very good card. We play three because you essentially, you'll go through three of these, honestly, in one duel. You're going to use all these links multiple times. Uh, and then we play three Hayate, same thing. You, you're going to use three of these, so we play three. Um, what Kagari does is she can attack directly. Um, she's 1500, so it's not a lot of damage, but it, it builds up and it also lets you close games by attacking over your opponent's monsters. Um, and then during damage calculation uh, that she battles, so that includes if your opponent attacks her, you also get her effect. Um, she can send a Sky Striker card from the deck to the graveyard. So that puts a spell in the grave. Um, which obviously is very important to Sky Strikers because we want those three spells in the grave so that we sort of get the additional effects. Um, but you also can put a spell in the grave that you want to add back off Kagari, which is a very interesting play that we, you know, frequently do in this deck. Um, you can also send Ray if you don't have one. Maybe you access your engine through Rose or maybe you access it through Drones um, and you need the Ray engrave so that she can float and things like that. So that's another way you can put her in the graveyard. Um, and then we got the one Kina. Um, essentially target a monster on the field and negate its attack or it can't attack essentially until the end of your opponent's turn. So this card's really good for surviving those OTKs, uh, Numerons and things like that. You can stop one of their monsters from attacking, which can be very, very relevant. Um, also, whenever you activate a Sky Striker spell, she gives you 100 life points. So not really important without the time rules of modern TCG. We're, we're playing the online variant that doesn't really have time rules where burning and life point gain is very important, but um, in those sorts of duels, it, it is a very cool effect, but um, for now, it's it's sort of irrelevant. But it's it's there, it's a nice little bonus that can come up every now and again. Uh, then we play 2Z. This is your essentially your boss monster besides Kagari. Um, and this has really good plays with Nibiru, um, which I was talking about earlier. So two monsters and one has to be Sky Striker. So if you steal your opponent's monster with Widow Anchor, you summon it with uh, Shark Cannon. Or even if you Nibiru them and you have the big rock on your field. You can make Zeke, and then when she's summoned, she can banish a monster on the field until the end phase, or until your opponent's end phase. 
um, so it can remove essentially two monsters, which is really, really good. Um, and then she can also target a card you control, send it to the graveyard, and then she gets a thousand attack permanently. So this card is really, really good. Um, she essentially goes to 2500 as a link 2, which is massive, and she can get even bigger, right? She can be 35, 45 if they don't deal with it, so very, very good. But um, she's essentially here to clear your main monster zones because you can't have any main monsters to activate Sky Striker spells. Obviously, they all say you cannot have any monsters in your main monster zone. So, uh, very good card. I play two because I play the Nibiru, so um, I normally go through two of them, but you can play one if you like. Um, then the last cards we play in the extra deck are just some generic Link monsters. So, I play the one area and the one dark. Essentially, these are just Link 2s that require one dark or one water, and then they summon a water or a dark from your friend's graveyard. Um, just generic Links. You can play anything you like here, but I suggest these just because... Um, Mostly dark decks you're going to be running into. This can also search Ray, which is really good. If they destroy this, you can search Ray. And removal cards, I play one Ningirsu and one Unicorn. Um, these are just here because they're just generic removal Link 3s. So, and the last card in the extra deck is just Excess Code. It's just a generic Link 4 that um, puts a lot of damage on board. Um, you know, this plus two um, Hayate attacks is, is game. So that's why we play this to essentially close out games. But um, that's the list, guys. Um, I tried to explain it and be as quick as possible for you. Um, if you stuck around, thank you so much for uh, checking out the video. Um, if you need me to go in-depth with anything or you didn't understand something, I know it's quite a complicated deck. Um, just comment down below. I'm happy to answer you. Or you can come and check out the stream. I play this deck actively on stream. I play with viewers. I check decks. Um, I help, you know, the community build decks if they need it. Um, yeah, we're a very welcoming community. So, you know, um, definitely drop by and say hello, and, and I'll uh, see you guys there. Peace.